Um, for those that haven't yet met me, my name is Greg Brill. I'm the technical lead for the CO Water Mandate. Um, and today I have the pleasure of, of launching our official working draft of net positive water impact. Um, and being in New York, I thought it would be a really good way to start with an, a matinee performance. We've put together a little NPWI launch video for everyone's enjoyment. So, um, WRC, uh, we intended to create a higher ambition for companies to take at their site levels up to 2050. Um, and the idea was like, how can we do more? How can we excite the private sector to move um, beyond what they can do individually or to bilateral partnership, but also through collective action. So the net positive water impact was set to address water quantity, quality, and access to um, water and sanitation. Net positive water impact or NPWI is an ambition for companies to ensure their water contributions exceed their impacts in water stress regions. It addresses water availability, quality and accessibility through site-specific impacts, company footprint and basin level collective action, aligning with other water stewardship approaches and supporting SDG 6. NPWR requires companies to go well beyond balancing their operational impact and footprint. To reduce basin water stress, they need to be committed to doing significantly more by engaging basin stakeholders on jointly identified basin challenges through collective action and by addressing these challenges through strategic investments across water availability, quality and accessibility. NPWI improves basin health, enhances business and societal value by improving water access and reduces company risk related to water. It also boosts water and climate resilience and energy security. Our sector, including hosting, is very dependent on fresh water. This means we need this natural resource to produce our final products. We also know that this natural resource is key for our survival. So we need to preserve and protect as much as we can. At Clita, we understand the critical importance of water security and growing concern of water stress globally. While we rely on water resources at our sites, we also offer various solutions to help our customers tackle environmental challenges, including those related to water. In other words, Kurita cannot exist without water. Water resources are key to every stage of the value chain, from extraction to consumption. It is therefore very key to every company in this world. We also know that water challenges are a significant source of business risks, leading to operational and supply chain disruptions, for example, and other problems, which will mean that companies will face increasing costs. Therefore, Companies that can prioritize water resource management and that can be good water stewards, including triggering collective action, will lay a strong foundation to tackle the challenges ahead. The water stewardship community and the greater public are realizing that there is an urgent need to scale action to address difficult and pressing water challenges. The overarching objective of NPWI is to make long-term improvements in basin health and resilience by addressing the underlying root causes of water availability, quality, and accessibility challenges. NPWI involves five steps, building awareness, setting ambitions, undertaking assessments, taking action, and measuring progress. It focuses on reducing water withdrawal, improving water quality, and enhancing access to wash services with progress tracked and validated. 
And PWI, we believe, will support companies from all sectors in defining an ambition at a basin level, which is very important. Given the format of the methodology and given its objectives, it can really be used as an overarching uh, statement or as a North Star by companies to guide the water-related action at watershed level. NPWI breaks barriers and requires companies think outside the box, from just their own operations into the broader river basin. NPWI helps address water stress in basins because it encourages us to think more globally about watershed health. Each region has its unique water issues, and NPWI guidance acknowledges this by encouraging us to consider location and regional context in our water stewardship efforts. In addition, the NPWI is a commitment to ensuring that our use of water resources contributes more to the environment than it takes. This ambitious goal exceeds the traditional approach of just reducing negative impacts. It's about creating a lasting, positive change in water stress basins around the world. These leaders are taking a bold step to not only go beyond their fence line from operational water management to watershed and community-focused water stewardship. They're also committing to a comprehensive and quantifiable approach to demonstrate positive impact in 100 priority basins. Uh, the MPWI guidance uh, will be very valuable for us as we interact with multiple clients in different areas and in different levels of maturity in their water journey. I think it provides a framework that is also flexible and would allow to different companies to evolve through the process. I really like that NPWI is framed in a flexible and multidimensional way. Because of the balanced structure of NPWI, companies can feel confident that with this approach, they'll be helping address the most important water stresses in a meaningful and prioritized way. The NPWI will support companies to have a standardized approach to measure their positive impact on water. This is key, because nowadays we do have many methodologies to measure the negative impact, but that's the first one that will support us to measure our positive impact. NPWI aligns with frameworks like those from the Alliance for Water Stewardship and Science-Based Targets Network, as well as multiple benefit accounting methodologies. The Freshwater Hub has worked closely with the CEO Water Mandate to ensure alignment and complementarity between our target set setting methodology and the NPWI ambition. Crosswalks in the NPWI technical guidance and in our Freshwater Hub paper release earlier this year present this alignment. And we have worked with a number of organizations over the months to develop not only the NPWI framework, but the shared metrics we will use to measure progress and basin diagnostic indicators that inform the baseline conditions. I think in the water stewardship space, there have been many wonderful partners that have really worked hard to bring together a whole set of different tools, frameworks and guidelines to um, make the corporate water stewardship journey navigatable and um, easier and each one of them address certain aspects and pieces and NPWI is really that overarching framework almost like an umbrella that allows all of these pieces to feed into it and to really give meaning and structure to all of these different efforts that already exist. We believe it's going to be complementary with other existing frameworks that companies already apply and that it will really support them in working towards a better water secure future and respect the planet. We recognize that no single organization can address water stress alone. The NPWI guidance emphasizes the importance of the collective action to create a positive impact in water stressed basins. It requires collaborations among various stakeholders, including businesses, local communities, governments, and NGOs to implement solutions that improve water resilience. I think it would allow people to measure the issues and the solutions better, and that would allow for easier communications between the different stakeholders, and therefore it will make it probably easier to come up with common solutions. It's really all about collective action and working with other actors in these basins to achieve impact at scale and improve the health of a basin. I think the guidance will allow multiple companies and organizations to work better together. By working together with available dollars, time and expertise, we can build together and help scale faster. This can be done by any company, no matter if they are really mature in the water related area, meaning they already have a water strategy and water actions in place, or whether if they're very young and just starting the water journey. NPWI is a great opportunity for companies to take a robust commitment at basin level and to ensure that they respect water-related planetary boundaries in the priority watersheds. 
As a call to action, all companies operating in water stress basins are encouraged to adopt and promote NPWI at the enterprise level and implement NPWI at each of their sites in water stress basins. It is only by scaling this work that we will see a net positive impact for water in basins globally. I think this is an exciting time for action on water and NPWI has a big role to play. I invite you to you know, learn more about it, check the guidance, it will help you understand how your company can be part of this movement to reduce water withdrawal, improve water quality and enhance wash services for everyone. Thank you very much, everybody, for contributing to, to the introductory video there. Um, and I think it gives a, a really nice holistic approach and, and, and viewpoint on what NPWR really is. It is um, systemically trying to, to shift the needle in the right direction through collective action and individual efforts um, to, to get to where we really uh, need to be. So I'm going to run through some of the, the high-level overviews of what NPWR is and isn't. Um, our really great contributors provided much of, much of the content, so I won't spend too much time here. Um, and then we'll have a, a little bit of a, a waterside chat as well with some of the implementers and um, alignment uh, companies as well, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. So if I can jump in with the, the PowerPoint, that'd be great. Thanks. All right, so MPWI at a, at a glance, if we look at some of these icons, it was mentioned in the video as well, it's a leadership ambition that's set at the enterprise level but implemented at the site level. It's a long-term commitment. We're looking at driving uh, positive change in these basins between now and, and up sort of and beyond 2050. It's implemented pre predominantly in water stress basins, but we really are encouraging companies to pick up NPWI um, in, in most of the basins that are facing water stress in which they operate. There are three distinct pillars to NPWI. The first is trying to understand what your operational impact is and address that. Then you go beyond looking into your operational footprint as part of pillar two. And then there's pillar three, which is really that collective action focus that helps move the needle with uh, collaborative efforts in these water stress basins. Currently, we're looking at three dimensions of water stress, water quantity, water quality, and, um, and accessibility really trying to understand um, how to, again, uh, make these systemic changes on the ground across these three dimensions. It was mentioned several times in the video that we've aligned very strategically with a number of other approaches in the corporate water stewardship space. We'll hear from one of our presenters today on how we've aligned as strategically as possible. The ultimate goal is to build long-term water resilience in these water stress basins um, and to really help drive the, the collective action focus on water as much as possible. I've mentioned the three dimensions of water stress. We're trying to reduce the overall um, volume of water withdrawn in the basins over time through looking at consumption and withdrawal as, as two dimensions there. Um, water quality, we really need to re reduce and ultimately avoid those pollutant loads at the site downstream and in the basin, so across these um, geographic areas, and then really improve access to water sanitation and hygiene services um, at work, within the communities, and then within the broader basin as well. Again, I've mentioned three pillars of NPWI, and this is really strategically placed to help organizations understand their own impact, their footprint, and then their, their basin um, presence as well through that pillar three um, component. So the first pillar is to reduce or avoid operational impacts. It then goes into the replenishment or restoring um, within that operational footprint component, and then to collaborate, and through collective action, deliver measurable basin outcomes. So really working collaboratively and we've heard from some really great speakers today on what that could look like across different geographies and different sectors. The ultimate goal here is net positive water impact. And you can see where the site level or sub-basin or basin level implementation of this work could be. And there's a really nice crossover around pillar two. So depending on sector or geography or context, this is where your pillar one, pillar two could show up versus your, your pillar two, pillar three. MPWI is a stepwise process. It's modular, it's not prescriptive. You can start and stop anywhere you would like, but we've pr provided the stepwise guidance, and for many that are familiar with the, a similar process developed by AB, MBEV, and TNC in 2022, we've provided a similar process here where step one is around awareness. Understand what MPWI is and how it can show up in your organization. Then you go into ambition, so setting this enterprise level ambition of being net positive across these three dimensions of water stress. You identify your list of sites and then you prioritize where you want to achieve NPWI as part of your rolling out and scaling up of this, of this effort. 
Um, some organizations that are already piloting NPWR are starting with one site, their flagship site, or the site that they believe would have the most catalytic impact from NPWI. We have other organizations starting with around three to four, and then some starting with 37. So it really is pretty modular in how you adopt and scale up NPWI across your company. Then we go across into assessment. Many of you have undertaken risk assessments and you understand this process pretty well. It then goes into identifying some of the action steps and then into measurement. So again, pretty intuitive, um, and, and we've tried to create this as um, a match aligned with existing processes, approaches, frameworks, and tools that are, that are out there. So now that you know what MPWI is, I thought a little bit of a history lesson would also help just to familiarize yourself with where we've come from and where we're hoping to go as well. So in 2019, when the WRC launched, net positive water impact was part of their initial uh, pledge components, one of three. And the, the uh, initial signers of the WRC pledge said that they would like to see uh, net positive being an ambition within the WRC. So the early concept was developed between 2019 and 2022 by a number of different organizations. And this is ultimately what we've used to develop the principles and pathways that informed the current working draft. So through a number of different um, engagement opportunities, including a dedicated Water Resilience Coalition task force, uh, various piloting efforts, um, webinars and events and two reviews, um, we've, had, we've landed on a, a working draft that we feel is, is pretty robust to get out into the world and be tested through a learning by doing approach. Um, just a massive thank you to everybody who's been part of the process to date, really engaging through almost 35 uh, engagement opportunities to get us to where we are today. And here we are at the launch event where we hope um, we can release this into the wild and it can fend for itself and, and really stand on its own two legs and, and be um, a key piece of the corporate water stewardship st uh, space um, and help companies achieve that net positive ambition that they set at that enterprise level. So today we will launch the working draft and I'll be sharing some of the guidance documents that are being launched today, um, as well as a number of upcoming uh, resources and publications as well, including a really useful FAQ um, and a, an internal tracking framework as well that companies can use at their own discretion to really track and monitor and, and report on progress. This is also an evolving framework, and I'll mention this several times uh, throughout the presentation today. We would like to uh, release this as a working draft and adopt a learning by doing approach. So seeing and, and hearing from companies through their insights, through their lessons learned, what can be refined, what can be iterated, what works really well, um, and go from there. So as part of this evolving work, we have um, set up a WRC task force um, on NPWI and how this can evolve, the different pieces of work, including the guidance, uh, net positive water impact for the resi uh, resilient value chain, so how this shows up in the supply chain, um, our internal tracking framework, and a number of other bits and pieces as well. So we're going to keep our finger on the pulse to make sure that um, we get companies as engaged as possible. And then a variety of webinars and events um, upcoming, and I'll speak to those towards the, the, the latter part of this presentation. I would like to call out seven specific companies that were part of the initial piloting organization. Um, and a massive thank you to you for raising your hand and being the leaders in the space and helping us uh, test and refine the NPWI working draft that we, be, that, that we are releasing today. Um, an amazing variety of sectors that's showing up. Um, and, and what they were saying is that they could potentially pilot this across around 15 pilot sites in 15 basins in nine countries. So again, already we're seeing almost 15% of the 100 priority basins showing up um, from the get-go. And we're really excited to see where NPWI shows up over the next year or two um, and how we can start refining based on these different geographic contexts and the insights gleaned from those. And the question that I often get asked is why, why launch NPWI today? And so there, there are four key learnings from, from our side. One is that we need to provide a coherent, peer-reviewed, practical framework that's um, shovel-ready for implementation. Um, but again, learning from doing, helping um, guide the refinement and iterating of this through a learning by doing approach. So we want to put something out there and test that this has legs. Um, we're confident through the piloting process, through the task force process, um, that we put something out there that's really robust and defensible, but nothing is set in stone. So please share your findings with us and, and we'd be happy to, to pivot as needed. We're adopting this learning by doing approach, as I've mentioned, and we want to improve NPWI as much as possible so that it is practically applicable, it's geographically agnostic, sector agnostic, but just works um, for companies that are wanting to set that high level ambition. 
We want to build strong concepts and informed direction. There are a number of organizations that are waiting specifically for this launch to be able to set their strategic direction around how net positive shows up across water in their organizations. So this is a really key milestone for those organizations to now have a piece um, of guidance to be able to inform their strategic direction. And then ultimately facilitate these partnership conversations and better integration across these collaboratives um, using NPWI as potentially a North Star in setting up your collaboratives and your collective action initiatives. A couple of key points. Again, I'm going to harp on these throughout the period just so that everyone knows where we are. Um, we are launching this as a working draft. It, it can be iterated and we hope to put out the next iteration in the next six months or a year based on the, the, the insights and lessons learned through the process of implementation. Um, it's going to be an evolving set of spaces, uh, evolving set of documents and resources, so please let us know what you need. If something's too technical, we can simplify. If something's too vague, we can certainly add more context. And again, a call to action would be just to help us implement and guide the direction that this work takes. It's a long-term ambition. We are not expecting an NPWR claim in the next six months or the next year. Um, but really are hoping to work with companies in, in getting this long-term ambition set in their strategy, in their policies, and then into practice as well. So please join us on this long-term journey um, and help us really create this net positive ambition globally. Claims are voluntary. It's not a necessity for any organization to make an NPWR claim. Again, it is a North Star ambition. You could use this as part of your strategic direction, um, but we are encouraging organizations that would like to make a claim um, to certainly do so, but it is completely voluntary. So how you want to communicate this internally or externally is completely up to you as an organization, but there's no requirement um, to, to make those claims uh, public at all. And we've intentionally created this as a low level of effort as possible. We've aligned very closely with other ambitions, um, uh, sorry, approaches and frameworks so that the data points that you're already sharing with them, you can utilize for NPWI. Most of the data points that we're asking for live in your company dashboard. You're sharing them through your ESG reporting, through CDP, through COP, and a variety of other processes as well. So it should literally take you about half an hour to an hour of copy-paste um, into it with uh, long-term ambitions to eventually create um, opportunities that once you submit um, your CDP or, or COP to be able to pull that data in directly. So it would be a very low level of effort required going forward. This is where we've landed. So through the two review processes, we were asked to um, split out some of the guidance documents and we've landed on four at the moment. So we have an executive summary, which is a high level four page document that is very useful for you to land on your C-suite or, or somebody that just needs to understand at a very high level what NPWI is and isn't. It's a key resource to, to really unlocking what NPW is from an understanding perspective. We then have an introductory section. So again, a useful starting point to understand what the process is, what the steps look like, and how you can really embed this within your organization. For those in the room that are, are more technically inclined, we then have the technical guidance on how to go about implementing NPWI. Many of you will be doing this in-house, some of you will be using practitioner services, consultants, and this will be a key resource to help you understand the implementation process. Again, non-prescriptive, it's modular, you can make this fit your company in whatever form you would like it to take. We've been working very closely with three or four organizations behind the scenes, and they've all been implementing NPWI in a completely different way, but arriving at the exact same point. And that's really exciting for us to see how modular and iterative this can be. We've also produced a step and practice guide, which showcases how implementation could look uh, across a, a hypothetical example. So again, you could use that resource saying, this works in my context, I can apply a very similar process. And so we just wanted to show how to operationalize NPWI from start to finish. A Couple of key points here. The first is with this practical guidance, we have a series of guidance documents to support implementation and the ambition um, in direct operations. Going from 2022, now I'll be mentioning some of the next steps in a sec, um, but we're looking at taking this into the supply chain as well. And so how do we start with indirect operations and then scale it up from there? Um, we are building an understanding across these five steps, starting with uh, setting your understanding through awareness all the way down to measurement as well. Um, it's flexible, it's non-prescriptive, I've mentioned this a couple of times, it's modular, and we really do encourage you to, to use the guidance um, as it best fits your organization and your sector. It is, we've pr produced that hypothetical example, as I've mentioned, on how to operationalize it across your direct operations, and then it can really support some of your communications and progress as well. 
We've also produced an internal tracking framework that we're hoping to shop around with our WRC task force, um, helping iterate the most practical use um, of this reporting framework to help companies, if they would like to use it, uh, report on their progress across NPWI um, using, again, that dashboard information that you, that you may already have at your disposal. Um, we're hoping that this can be used for both internal or external communications, but again, use it as, as you would like to. Um, there's no necessity, there's, there's nothing that is mandatory at all here. Um, I've mentioned it requires existing data points. Most of this is in your ESG reports, your, your CDP processes, et cetera. Um, and then uh, a very low barrier to entry. We're asking for, for inputs once a year or once every two years at most. So it really shouldn't be taking you all that long to be able to uh, put in the, the information that we, that we are looking for. It can support the voluntary claims process if you would like to through a third party exercise that we've laid out in the technical guidance. Again, this is completely voluntary, um, but we, we are looking for um, just to be able to aggregate some of that impact out at the, at the basin scale. And then ultimately it contributes to the 100 basins app, which Andre and Todd showed previously. So again, just trying to aggregate that impact up um, to showcase where we are having F, um, impact on the ground through these collective action um, and, and unilateral projects as well. I presented this work during our initial um, call this morning, is that the NPWI journey, we don't necessarily think that most companies are going to be doing it alone, and we really encourage you to, to engage with the CO Water Mandate, um, and as such, we've created different levels of tiers of support um, in order to support you in your scaling and implementation of NPWI. So the first tier is available for all. It's a fairly low level of effort. Um, we are going to be producing a series of uh, videos, um, of different resources that are going to be available to, for anybody that would like to access um, the NPWI journey um, and understand what that looks like. We've got a dedicated website that has all the resources that I've mentioned previously um, there. We will be having uh, email correspondence, a limited number of calls available, and this support will be ongoing throughout the NPWI journey. So from now, right up to 2050 and beyond. Um, tier two, tier three, and tier four are a little bit more dedicated hands-on support. And depending on where you sit in the landscape of mandate or WRC, you can slot into, into one of these. But it'll be very bespoke, hands-on engagement through a number of webinars and events. We would love to glean some of your insights that you've learned from the process um, and, and really have a co-learnings opportunity where companies can say, this is what we've experienced through implementation. This is a pressure point. This works really well. And how do we share those learnings across WRC mandate and external partners as well? So really some great opportunities to get NPWI socialized and to get um, more people engaged as we go. That tier number three is the most um, hands-on experience. It, it's a paid-for service um, where we can have individualized support with organizations across up to about three sites to really help implementation um, on, on, uh, across those three sites. This will take about a year, year and a half to really implement, um, but this will be our, our, our most intensive tier as well. So please feel free to reach out uh, to anybody at the mandate and we'd be happy to explore some of these support functions that we've got. Again, just a QR code to access any of our resources. Again, the four documents that we are launching today are, are listed there, and we have a number of upcoming. So we're certainly not um, taking our foot off the gas at all. We've got uh, the internal tracking framework that we hope to launch in either Q4 of this year or early uh, Q1 of next year, based on the outcomes of that task force. Um, we're going to be having a NPWI WRC crosswalk, so how NPWI is aligning and supports the WRC ambitions, and then a number of different crosswalks as well. Um, Adrian, uh, um, Scott, who will be uh, sitting with me on the panel, will be talking about some of the AWS, the Alliance for Water Stewardship Alignment that we've got with NPWI. We'll have a, a launch uh, in a, a couple of weeks of that document. Um, and then we're also looking at CRSD um, or CSRD um, and, and seeing how, how that could align with NPWI more specifically as well. That was raised as one of the key focus areas. There was a whirlwind tour of NPWI, about four years worth of work summarized into about 12 minutes. So um, if there are any questions, please feel free to reach out to me um, and I'd be happy to, to set up a call or we can have a chat afterwards about any questions you may have. Um, a lot has been jam-packed in, into that quick session. At this point, I'd like to ask our panel discussion, or our panel members rather, to, to come up. Um, Laura Weintraub from, from Limnatec, Vice President and um, Senior Water uh, Thank you. Water Stewardship Lead, um, and Scott McCready from the Alliance for Water Stewardship, um, Senior Policy Officer there. 
we'll be having a, a panel discussion on two key elements of, of NPW1. I'm going to come and join you over there. The key components that I'd like to talk about today, one is around alignment and one is around evolution, because we see that there is a need for alignment within the corporate water stewardship space and the need to evolve as well as the science improves and as we get the insights from, um, from our members. So as I jump across, let me start by saying, if you can please introduce yourselves and then mention how you're interacting or you hope to interact with NPWI going forward. Great, thank you, Greg. Honored to be on this panel today. Um, Laura Weintraub, Vice President at Limnotech. Um, for those that don't know our organization, we're a 50-year-old water resources environmental engineering firm and um, worked for many years in the regulatory space, but over the last 15 years have had the, the fantastic opportunity to evolve with the water stewardship space, supporting a number of clients with um, water risk assessment. Um, another key thing we do is support the benefit quantification of different water stewardship projects. So helping author the VWBA methodology as well as the water quality benefit accounting and wash benefit accounting, which we'll talk about later today, and biodiversity, which is coming up. So, um, and then in addition, we, we often help companies with strategy development and goal setting and um, determining how to move those pieces forward as far as their growing, um, their growing water stewardship uh, programs and also uh, disclosure. So really a lot of the different pieces of the engine is a way I like to think of it that make up the, the pieces of water stewardship and what it's evolved to today. So very honored to be here today. Thanks, Greg. Uh, thanks very much, Laura. Uh, hi, <coughs> I, I'm Scott McCready. I am Chief Strategy Officer at AWS, Alliance for Water Stewardship. Um, so we are a sustainability standard system for water, for doing water stewardship at facilities and subcatchments. And we're also a membership network of about 200 plus organizations, um, NGOs, companies, um, development agencies, development banks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the question was, uh, how does AWS and NPWI relate? Um, there is a, a, a philosophical response and a technical response. So the, the philosophical response, um, NPWI lays out an ambition. So ambitions excite companies. So particularly leading companies. So you're all here because you want to be seen as leading companies. You're responding to the raising of the bar that the voluntary sector has helped kind of like collaborate with you on in terms of what, what our ambition could be. Um, most of you want to be seen as leaders and, and, and CEOs kind of like, uh, like bold ambitions. So they respond to bold ambitions and ambitions make things happen. So I often get asked, well, what's the difference between AWS and the mandate? Because we're, we're basically the two kind of main membership organizations in stewardship. I think the, the, the difference is focus. So our core focus is on facilities kind of thing. So, so farms, factories, data centers, facilities and places. We do speak to companies at a headquarter level, but it's mainly to unlock access to, to farms, factories, data centers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the mandate's focus is companies at an enterprise level. So you're particularly interested in leadership. Um, the clue's in the name, the CEO water mandate. Um, the mandate also looks at facilities, it also looks at kind of like the, the component parts of companies, but really it's about generating leadership. Um, there, there's something I said at Stockholm that I kind of like, want well, to reiterate here. Um, I sometimes think that the mandate doesn't really get the credit it deserves for the incubation of big ideas that have happened in stewardship. So <clears throat> AWS is one of them kind of thing. Without the space that Jason, Gavin, Mylan, Peter, and kind of the teams that have followed, um, the water stewardship space would look very, very different. So the mandate continues to be the primary driver of new companies coming into this space. And, and the way it does that is by exciting people about ambition. And for me, NPWI is the latest iteration of that ambition. It's the latest iteration of raising the bar. So why AWS do I care about ambition? The reason I care about ambition is because companies are not going to use a site-based standard like ours unless they have ambition. So we exist in an ecosystem where you're raising the bar and we respond to that. So that was my philosophical answer. Um, the, the, the technical answer is a little bit more boring, frankly. Um, the things that NPWI asks you to do, they reflect the same spirit and kind of aspects of AWS, but at different scales. So NPWI's primary focus is the basin, um, AWS's sites and subcatchments. Um, the basins that NPWI focus on has lots and lots of sites in it. It has several subcatchments in it. 
So having an MP NPWI ambition will stimulate kind of interest and kind of like reasons for looking at site-based action that the AWS standard can help fulfill. Similarly, if you exist in a basin where you have multiple suppliers, multiple kind of um, peers who are all using water, you're only going to realize those ambitions by helping others take site-based actions. Wonderful, thank you. Well, I'm going to kick off a question with you on, on alignment. So as an organization that supports companies through their corporate water stewardship journey, how do you see NPWI fitting into the space and supporting companies in their water ambitions? Yeah, I think as I mentioned before, a lot of the engine pieces, this is an opportunity to build them into a car. And um, I, a couple things I really like about the NPWI um, ambition is that it's very holistic and it's gonna integrate across volume, quantity issues, water quality issues, water access issues. As we know, water stewardship's really evolved. You know, if we dialed back 15 years ago, the focus really was on volumes, but that's not the way it is anymore. Mm -hmm. We understand the holistic nature of water challenges, um, how it changes, it's varied across geographies and how we really need to look at multi-benefits. So as those concepts are evolving, I think NPWI is the perfect framework to bring those pieces together in a way that is, is measurable, it's quantifiable, and it's, um, it's gonna be able to also enforce the collective action um, the strength of being able to work together and to help scale up solutions. So I, I think it's it's really an integrating piece that I think, um, as you mentioned, shouldn't. It's not intended to be a new thing. It's meant to really pull so many things together. And I think it's also really well suited for existing water stewardship programs, maybe mature companies that have been in the space a while, they see these pieces already in their programs and, and how do they, they knit those together, as well as new companies that are just getting started and they can use it as some direction on how they may want to set their targets, perhaps in a very holistic way because that, that is what MPWI is really helping drive us towards a, a more complete solution. Wonderful, thanks. Scott, as an organization that has a standard with a stepwise process, can you share any advice with the companies in the room on what implementation of such a framework can entail? Yeah, um, the, way, the way it's really tended to work with AWS is that companies come in and they, they try it out. They, they try out a one site or a group of sites and so on and so forth, and they learn. So they work with companies like Lambda Tech, they work with and it, several other kind of consultancy members. And what are they doing? They are learning. Kind of thing. Um, so they are iterating, iterating, iterating. And I think that that's the kind of key message I would give back to um, yourselves on kind of like the, the evolution of NPWI. Iterate, iterate, iterate. Um, how do you do that? Um, peer learning. So learning from the pilot companies, peer learning from each other, um, from users. So uh, you can iterate the framework, um, you can iterate the guidance, you can iterate capacity building, training, and so on and so forth. Um, the thing you need to balance, and, and this is something that we um, is, uh, we deal with just now, so we're currently kind of revising our standard. We're on the thir third iteration of our standard, the consultation on just now, is how do you balance accessibility and impact? Because you want it to be as robust as you possibly can, but you also want people to be able to use it. So there's, so there's a balancing act there between kind of like what you learn and how you apply that in a practical way to actually reach the volume because there's no point having something that is so difficult to use that nobody uses it. But equally, there's no point having something that's so accessible that kind of like it actually doesn't have the impact. Um, another thing is connections. Um, so you, you highlighted on earlier on is, is no one framework, no one thing is sort of like I've learned through several years, decades plus of this sort of stuff is like there is no single framework that is going to solve all of your problems. So there's connections with other frameworks, but there's also connections with other organizations. And I think you, you see, you've seen that in the collective action conversations, you've seen that in the MOU that we, we've signed. It's really about recognizing there's a mutual dependency and it only really comes from kind of conversations between each other and improving that balancing act between uh, accessibility and impact. Excellent, thank you. And I, the, the key point for me that, that I'm gonna take away from both is iterate, implement, impact. And I think that's the key thing, but I, I really like the iterate, 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 and it's a nice segue, <coughs> because it, it is, right? The learning by doing is, is how you really learn, and through these peer learning and co-learning opportunities is, is how we all share the insights that we get.
So I'm going, to, I'm going to pivot slightly from the alignment component into, into the evolution because we know it's an evolving corporate water stewardship space, but also the, the working draft that's out there will, in a year or two, be somewhat different to what we're seeing it, as we are now. Laura, you've seen a lot come and go in the corporate water stewardship space, even though you, you've young at heart, I suppose. Um, <laughs> and um, frameworks have, have come in and gone across your desk. So how have you seen these evolve through implementation and the lessons learned over time? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's perfect to say this is going to be a continual improvement process to implement this framework. And as you mentioned, at Limnotech, we've had experience with a few different examples, um, one being the Alliance for Water Stewardship um, standard. We started working with that in 2010 when it was in beta version, applied it to the Great Lakes area where I'm from, and it was... Like it wasn't even like it was the ingredients of the cake. It wasn't even fully baked yet. And and here we are fast forwarding. And and I saw the evolution of working with with um, clients that were wanting to explore the standard, implement the standard. And as the standard evolved, it improved. And um, some of the the clarity that was provided and the learnings that were drawn from those first applications were then pulled in. And and it's really evolved over time. And that's one example. And then the other one is volumetric benefit accounting. And you know that started out with with Coca Cola many years ago. And and other first movers to develop some initial methods and um, get those published, but now it's evolved into a 2019 publication and we're going to be um, coming to the finish line with a, a um, updated v VWBA 2.0. And again, it's pulling in those things that work well and then from learnings and, and past implementations being able to um, pull those in and evolve. So I think the, the learning by doing, I'm very optimistic that um, as NPWI is explored with more companies, more types of watersheds, different kinds of challenges, and as the tools evolve to support that, there'll be a lot of opportunity to, to um, go towards a refinement of the methods and um, really companies learning from each other, that will br bring a lot of value as well. Wonderful. It's got a similar question, um, but more specifically focused on, on the standard, because as Laura's mentioned, it's gone through multiple iterations. You said you're on version three now. How did you adapt and iterate the standard through the insights of your implementation partners and, and practitioners that, that have been part of the journey and, and really brought in the changing needs of the corporate water stewardship stakeholders? I mean, I alluded to AWS being two things. Um, so we are, we are custodians of a standard, um, but we're also a network kind of thing, we're alliance. And, and the standard really wouldn't come to life without the network, because the network is basically the, the, the repository of, of learning on doing this. It's sort of like um, no one at AWS is the, is, the, is the technical godhead of kind of how the AWS standard works. It really comes from an, an ongoing conversation about what works but doesn't work. Um, Mm -hmm. the auditing process, the feedback, the data, the so on and so forth. So we have a two-way conversation with the, uh, the the network, the alliance, and that two-way conversation is really us talking about how you can help people in terms of what we, we have learned, but it's also a kind of a drawing in of learning. It's a drawing in of kind of um, experiences that we then filter back out through working groups and so on and so forth. So I was really pleased when I saw the model that you put up kind of thing because it's very similar to what we do. One of the things we, we've learned is that the work doesn't stop when you finish writing the document. <laughs> it's sort of like the, it, it continues to go on, and it's really about helping people to do things. And I think a lot of this is, uh, if you look at to t talk about CS, the, the big topics at um, uh, Stockholm was CSRD and CS Triple D. I think the thing that needs to be recognised there is that that's actually a consequence of this community. It's sort of like it's vol the voluntary sector, the NGOs and the, and the leading businesses getting together and raising the bar on ambition. So regulation has followed on as a consequence of that. And I think the, uh, I talked about ambition a lot earlier on, on top of leadership. So the opportunity here really is how do we keep maintaining and building on that ambition? And I think iteration, more, more, more ambition, and so on and so forth. So. Well, at this point, I just want to thank you both for the time that you've given exploring some of the alignment opportunities, but also how this could evolve over space. And again, iterate, implement, impact. I, I love those three eyes that we can take away. So please join me in thanking our panelists. Um, and, and please, again, reach out to them at any point. Thanks, Thanks very much. A few last points from me before I hand over to our colleagues from Wash for Work to explore some of their components is just around some of the next steps and, and call to action. So as we heard from the panel, 
we're certainly not resting on our laurels at all. This is where the work really begins. And we start evolving, we start listening, we start implementing, and, and ultimately learning as we go. So we've got quite an ambitious timeline uh, between now and the end of 2025. We, um, if you cast your mind back a few weeks ago, many of us were in Stockholm exploring um, a number of different components around bridging boundaries. And NPWI had a kind of soft launch in Stockholm where we shared some of the key workings um, of this work with um, a number of our corporate partners and, and those that were in the room on, on that last Thursday. We had a few pre-launch sessions with our WRC members over the last two weeks where we explored some of the ins and outs, we answered some of the tough questions, and we, and we got this in front of our implementation partners, our front runners, our thought leaders, um, to make sure this is landing um, with the right key messaging. Today is the official launch of the, the working draft. It's now out in the world, and we really do encourage you to, to be a part of the process going forward. We are, as I've mentioned, starting um, uh, a new task force for NPWI with multiple different components. One is going to be around the key learnings that come out of implementation. It's going to be around the, the internal tracking framework, what makes most sense from a practical use perspective, where are the pressure points, what can this look like, how can this align with your existing dashboards and data, um, and a variety of other um, aspects as well. So this is a, an evolving space. This needs to be a, a key opportunity um, for, for organizations within the WRC to engage with us, for us to learn and, and adapt over time. We have a United Nations Global Compact Academy session scheduled for mid-November, where we'll be pre presenting a high-level overview of what NPWI journey looks like um, for our 20 plus thousand organizations that form part of the Global Compact. So again, really part of the, the broader socialization. Um, we will be showing up at a number of the, the um, different events in November as well, including the Desertification COP, the International Desalination Reuse Association's World Summit, um, and the One Water Summit as well. So a number of invitations have been extended and NPWI is showing up quite actively uh, within all of those different um, uh, events as well. Uh, in January 2025, we're going to kick off stage two of this work where we start building out the resi uh, resilient value chain, so the supply chain focus of NPWI, uh, to really get this uh, as a broad um, and holistic approach as possible. And then from around February, we're going to start working with validators and organizations that will be supporting uh, the milestones and claims progress, um, but also supporting organizations in their NPWI journey. So we look forward to quite a robust process between now and Q1 of 2025. From now upwards, uh, we'll be working very closely with a number of organizations along the implementation journey. Uh, we've already got, um, as I've mentioned, a number of active partners that have started uh, their NPWI process. Some are really advanced, some are just starting out, but it's really exciting to see how this is landing across different geographies and different sectors. We'll be having ongoing engagements, and again, um, a call to action. If you have any questions, any concerns, any comments, please feel free to reach out to any of the technical team and we'd be happy to support you along your journey. And then just regular updates to the support materials. Nothing is set in stone. We'll be putting out new revised versions as we iterate, as we adapt. And we're looking forward to engaging with you on this journey. So as part of the last um, slides from my side, these next steps and call to action. It's just really explore opportunities for NPWI implementation. Many of us in the room are sitting at the coal face of what NPWI is and where it could land across different sectors and geographies. Um, and, and we really do encourage you to pick this up and, and trial it and, and feedback um, the insights that, that you glean from implementation. We are, um, as mentioned, offering different tiered support levels. So please feel free to engage with us across any of those support levels um, and we'd be happy to, to support you as, as needed. We are always looking for speakers for our different events, including the UN Academy session coming up in November, um, sitting on panels across the, the different high level ambition um, and events. So please, if you are a part of that NPWI journey, please raise your hand and we'd love to share some of your, your insights with the, the broader um, spectrum of, of folk uh, engaging with NPWI. For WRC members, please join these task forces. We can only change what we hear from your side. So if there is a pressure point, let us know, we can always adapt that and proceed from there. We want this to be as practical and pragmatic an approach and ambition as possible. And we can only do that through your insights um, that, we, that we learn from you. And then finally is just learn by doing. We really need to iterate through implementation and we encourage you to be part of that process going forward. And last but not least is just a huge amount of thanks to everybody that's been involved in this process, from the organizations uh, involved in the original concept and development processes um, back in 2019, 
um, to the task force members that have been part of the, the hour or 90 minute sessions that we've had, the 15 or so of those, to the seven piloting companies. We could not have done this without you. Thank you for raising your hand up front um, and really being part of that thought leadership space. To all the reviewers that, we, that we've had over the last two reviews, we received just short of a thousand comments that we addressed in, in under nine months. Thank you for your incredible insights in making this as, as robust and rounded as possible. It really has been a fantastic process um, through very active engagements. To the panelists, today's panelists, but also those that were part of Stockholm or other events that we've had, um, to future panelists as well, thank you in advance for, for your time, for your insights, um, and for the, the love that you've shown to NPWI. To the mandate and PI colleagues that we've had um, engaging over the last year and a half with us, thank you for your insights. Um, and again, making sure that we connect the dots, cross the I's, or cross the T's and dot the I's and, and everything else that comes with the letters. And then the biggest thanks of all to my technical team for helping get this piece across the line. It's been a huge amount of work of, of love and tears, um, but it's just been a phenomenal effort and we are so excited to have this out in the world. So thank you everybody that's been involved and to those that will pick this up and, and help drive and socialize this work going forward. So at that point, just a massive thank you to everyone for attending today, for engaging, um, e even passively in the audience, watching the videos. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to reach out to our technical team and we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. And just engage with the, the resources that are out there. We would really welcome your feedback, positive and negative, um, to make sure that, that we get this across the line as, as much as we can. So thank you again.